I'm uh, Bob Berg. Uh, happy to be with you today on uh, my 130 foot Westport named Relentless. We're going to take a nice tour today and hopefully y'all like it. Welcome to another edition of Boat Tour Tuesday by Sailing Doodles. This is the show where we interview cruisers that we come across and then take you on an in-depth tour of their vessel. In this episode, we're taking a tour of this Westport 130. Westport began in the 60s by making commercial fishing vessels and then ventured into the recreational yacht market. They make four different models, the 112, 125, 130, and the 164. The name of this vessel is Relentless, and she's a beautiful piece of American craftsmanship. Uh, my first boating experience really was with my dad uh, down in Dinner Key in Miami. We would rent a sailboat and go sailing, and he would show me how you could use the keel to cut through sandbars. <laughs> sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, uh, but we had a lot of fun, and uh, that was my introduction to boating. Uh, really liked, really liked uh, the sailboats, liked being out on the water. And now boating has really become um, a big part of my life. When I first got into uh, power yachts, or motor yachts, uh, my first one was a, a 65 foot azimuth. Um, not the greatest boat in the world, but I thought it was big and beautiful. A great boat, great for entertaining, really enjoyed that boat, but needed a little something extra. I wanted three things in the new boat. Um, I wanted better crew quarters. Um, I felt that if the crew was more comfortable, that maybe crew longevity would be a better thing. Um, I also wanted, as, a, as an owner, I wanted a little more privacy. Um, this current 130 Westport that we're on right now has a crew of seven. Uh, so I wanted a little more privacy and I wanted a Sky Lounge, which is where we're sitting today. This 130 Westport uh, was built in 2006. Uh, she cruises uh, 10 to 12 knots by choice. Very capable of getting up on plane, doing 28 knots. I've seen it myself. We did it in the sea trial. Um, uh, burns a gas station doing it, but uh, <laughs> to see a 130 foot boat up on plane uh, doing 28 knots is a pretty impressive sight. Um, but it's a very economical boat at 10 or 12 knots. A very nice riding, can handle, can handle a big sea. It's the other thing I really wanted in, in the next bow was a, a more ocean going vessel. Uh, so had this now for going on two years, uh, really enjoy it and we'll see what the future brings. In any yacht, whether it's you know a 60 foot yacht or a 300 foot yacht, crew is certainly a challenge. So I really rely on a captain who I believe I have a very good captain now but I rely on her to manage the crew and hopefully keep me a little insulated from that. One of the things that you'll learn very quickly when you own a boat such as this is a big boat like this can be a very lonely place if you don't have wonderful friends to enjoy it with. And that's first and foremost, it's a, it's a wonderful place to entertain people. Um, we have the master stateroom, which is an on-deck master stateroom. And then down below, we have four guest staterooms. Um, two of those are king size uh, staterooms. One's a twin and one is a queen. Um, but they're very, they're very roomy, so the guests are very comfortable. So presently, um, our charter world with Relentless um, is, is uh, managed by a company called IYC, International Yacht Corporation, whatever. Um, and they secure the charters for us through various agents around the world. Uh, the primary cruising grounds for this boat is, like I said before, the Bahamas. Um, if someone wants to charter the boat, uh, the way it works, um, the basic charter fee is $95,000 per week. Um, but that's not the whole ball game. Uh, for that, you get the crew, you get the boat, and then in addition to that, um, you have your fuel, whatever fuel you burn, you pay for that over and above. Uh, your food and liquor is over and above. Uh, and then of course, uh, crew tip is obviously not mandatory, but highly suggested. And that's anywhere of, you know, 10 to 20% of the total, whatever that works out. So it's, it works out to maybe about all in, in the, uh, $130,000 a week category is really what it comes to. 
One of the things that I would like to talk about, obviously, is, you know, in the world of, of boating, a lot of folks are thought of as either power boaters or they're thought of as sail boaters. And sometimes the two don't get along with each other. I happen to be both. I enjoy both. Um, I have traditionally looked at sailboats as a as a as a piece of equipment that is raced. So I've only really done racing sailboats. Um, you'll see a picture on the boat of a, a boat called To the Moon in 2014. We won the overall championship uh, in the Chicago to Mackinac Island race. We beat 330 boats. Uh, second place is 45 minutes behind us. So it was a it was a great win. It was the first time and only time we've entered that race. Um, did it with my daughter. Very, very happy about that. All right. Uh, well, you ready to do the tour then? Let's do it. Well, Bob, this is already impressive. I mean, we're down here in the engine compartment and the electrical panel alone is pretty amazing. And then these guys here. So uh, tell us what you got engine wise here. Well, you certainly can see why you have to have a full time engineer in a boat like oh this. Gosh. I mean, I know some of this, but I certainly don't know all of it. Mm -hmm. um, so we have uh, twin MTU engines that are 2,600 horsepower each. Uh, that's what that's what'll get you going. <laughs> that's what'll get you going. Yeah. Uh, it burns a lot of fuel, I imagine, too. Yeah. You know, I gotta tell you, at uh, at 10 or 12 knots, um, with the generator generator running in both engines, it's about 40 gallons an hour. So it's really not horrible. I mean, you're moving a lot of weight. Yeah. You're moving a you're moving a big hotel here. Yeah. All right. Well, let's step in here to the engine room. Like I said, 2,600 horsepower each, and then you'll see the Northern Lights generators on either side. The two. Two of those, both in sound enclosures. Right. How many kilowatts are those, do you know? Uh, I believe they're 85 kW. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty big. Yeah, they're big. Yeah. They're big. I'm a power, like, a whole block on a um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, any one of them will run the entire boat. We'd never have to really run both at the same time. No, yeah. not at all. The right. engines actually just, just had their 4,000 hour service done. Um, so they are fresh and ready to go. All right. Now there's another room back here too. So in here. Well, we've got a couple of things. Uh, to your right, we have coolers, freezers for you know extended voyages. I I like to know that we can go 30 days without having to restock. So when we leave the states, um, really don't want to have to buy anything in the Bahamas from you know, grocery stores in there. So. Um, if we can get by 30 days, that pretty much handles it. Okay. And then right here, we have these, these are new electrical inverters. Just have these done. Uh, the other ones are kind of worn out. Okay. And then if you go through this door, mm -hmm. uh, this is where we have uh, some more storage. The AC units, you'll see the chillers in here. Uh, and just a little bit of storage there as well. I was impressed by the engine room, but it was time to head up for some luxury on the main deck. What would you call this area here? This is the aft deck. Uh, this is really a great place to hang out. As a matter of fact, as long as it's not raining, all of our meals are here in the aft deck. Okay. It's this very nice place to sit. A little chilly today. Yeah. We have another bar here, TV, so you can sit here, watch a ball game, have a meal, do whatever, but it's a nice, spacious area. And then, uh, so that door that was down in the engine room opens up, you call this the swim deck? Yes, Okay. swim platform. We also use that for boarding and onboarding guests from, we, we tow a 32 foot Intrepid. So we use that to board and onboard guests. You can see this would be a great, uh, especially during a nice, you know, warm summer day, hanging out back here, this would be great. So. Cocktails go down easy back here. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, so we move forward there into the, what do you call it, the main okay, salon? So we're going from the aft deck now, we're gonna go into the salon. Okay. Uh, we're fortunate here to have a, a nice sit down bar uh, and a beautiful, uh, big sofa, comfortable chair, TV that pops up over here, oh, okay. and an indoor dining table, which has probably been used maybe three or four times because everybody wants to be outside right. and the weather's good. Yeah. The room the room functions can go up. Big windows. Yeah, so I was going to say, windows you can see all, well. Yeah, all when, you're, when you're sitting down, you can see out, which is really cool. Yeah, 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 that is nice. I mean, this is very comfortable. I mean, I, I mean this, 
Wait, what's the beam on this boat? 28. 28, so, yeah. And then you so you, it's even wider, too, because you have the little runners down the side, too. For so we have the full walk around, which is nice, yeah. which is which is nice, yeah. Okay, all right, so then uh, heading in this way, we have the galley. So this is the galley. Uh, through the door right here, goes down to the crew area. Uh, there's a little breakfast kind of nook situation here, which rarely gets used, but it's there, it's nice. Uh, but the galley is really full service, and chefs really like to cook in here. So, so you don't have a full-time chef, but when you do charters or you go on a trip, you bring on a chef. Correct. Okay. And then you have giant sub-zero. I mean, I guess you to have seven people plus guests. I mean, so yeah. you're gonna have 10, 12 people on the boat. You need a big refrigerator. Yeah. So think about it. You know, you've got uh, seven crew uh -huh. and potentially. Uh, you know, 10 guests. Right. So 17 people. And you gotta so, feed all of them. That's, so, that's a lot so of food. 30 days yeah, and yeah, 17 right. people, yeah. you know, that adds up. Well, so the battery's running the camera. Hopefully, it's such a big boat. I don't know. I may have to go back and get another camera. But. So this is the, the, the boat that you uh, won the race in. Right, Bobby. This is uh, a 42 Swan. Uh, before we decided to enter the Chicago to Mackinac race in 2014, I had been studying the race for three or four years. And if we ever did try to do it, uh, I kind of knew what kind of boat I wanted to, to try it in. And found this boat in Bermuda in a little bit of disrepair. We brought it back to Annapolis, completely rehabbed it, ordered the new sails. Carbon um, fiber sails? All carbon fiber, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, to win these races, there's yeah. no shortcuts. Right, there's right, no right. shortcuts. Um, about half amateur crew and half professional crew myself and my daughter it's actually her idea she came to me and said dad the chicago mac only race really looks cool maybe we should give it a try right there you go so put together the effort got the crew i had raced sailboats uh a couple times in my life previously we had done the circuit up and down the east coast in a j109 if people know what that might be mm -hmm. um that was great we had a lot of success with that boat um so this was just a natural thing to try and, and it all worked out okay all right, well, let's, uh, like, so now this, uh, the, the master cabin's on the main deck here. Yeah, master okay. cabin's in the main deck with four guest staterooms down below. Okay. So we'll go now, we'll go to the master okay. stateroom. So on the way to the master is a little day head, you know, for right off the salon on that, but we're moving forward to the master this way. Hey, one thing I got to say is that the carpet on this thing is, is just, I mean, it's like walking on, I don't know, memory foam or something. It's amazing. It's great. We recently replaced it, yeah. Um, and then of course you see the runners down. So if we're not in full entertainment mode, we'll mm -hmm. put the runners down and, and try to you know preserve minimize, the, yeah, yeah, preserve the carpet. All right, so this is your master cabin. This is quite spacious, I gotta say. <laughs> this is what they refer to as an on deck master stateroom. Okay. Um, not too sure how much I really like the on deck master. I've had boats where. You know, the master has been down below, and I've had boats where the master's been up. Uh, I maybe kind of like the privacy of maybe Coming being up. down below, oh, yeah. being down below. So let's say, uh, it, well, so you have the big screen TV here, you have a little desk area yep. for work. Yes. And I mean, any other features we need to point out here? No, it's king size bed. Yep. You, you got it with the workstation. Uh, there's a tub and a shower yep. in the in the. Uh, well, let's bathroom. let's go in the the the, the 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 master head there. I, I hate to call it even a head because it's not a head. It's I mean it's it's a, this is like a you know first class bathroom. It's like you were saying. It's not quite his nurse. You have double sinks, one on each side, and a big tub and a shower. Um, Yes. So you, you can have your own side. Right. Two heads and you can have the woman's side over here. Um, on the other side over there, two heads. So it facilitates obviously getting ready quicker mm -hmm. when you're trying to go out or something like that. It's good. We're going to go down here. There's four staterooms like okay. I said before. Uh, two kings, a queen, and uh, a double. Uh, but they're, the rooms are all about the same size and the bathrooms are very nice size as well. This is impressive, I gotta say. I mean, I, it's the amount of technology in here. I mean, I, I think when I came up here the first time, I was talking to you, I was like, man, it was it a little intimidating parking this boat for the first time and really, because you can't see very well here and, and, you know, there's a lot of boat. Well, what helps a lot with that is A, the captain has constant communication with the crew members that are scattered about the boat when you're docking. So she has wing stations. She can walk right out on the wing and operate the boat from that side. 
where she can come out and operate the boat from this side as well. So she can see better. A she little. can see better. And then the crew members are telling her, you know, you're four feet from this, come back this way, that way, that way. So she can see relatively well, and then with them helping, it's not that bad. Yeah. And, 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 and she's also a conscious of the tides and the winds, right. of course. So up here, you've got your, your navigation, you have multiple different ways of navigation. You said you even have a backup. Navigation is right. completely separate. Right, so the fundamental uh, system we use is Noble Tech. Okay. It's a computer-driven uh, software, and you see that on the big screens. Uh, and then we have a completely independent, assuming the Noble Tech system went down for whatever reason, we have a backup Garmin system that's completely independent of everything else. Uh, so that would obviously get you home mm -hmm. and uh, or Navionics on your phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I use that quite yeah, often. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And so then it does have bow thruster, no stern thruster, right? No stern thruster. And it's not pods, it's, it's shaft driven? Yes. Okay. It's, it's just a traditional shaft and rudder situation. Um, six and a half foot draft. Yeah. Uh, bow thruster and uh, autopilot, obviously. So, yeah, pretty much, pretty much everything. Yeah. Well, these, these I mean, it's got to be. I'm gonna, I got to sit up here. Oh yeah, these babies, these are comfortable. Oh yeah. These are comfortable. I could, I could yeah, I could cruise up here like. Yeah, this. you could. You need a little of this action. <laughs> so, what do you call this area here? Well, this is actually my favorite spot on the boat. Okay. This is the Sky Lounge. Um, when I was talking earlier, I talked about privacy is one of the things that I was looking to get in the next boat that I owned, um, and this this Sky Lounge provides that. Um, it has a small bar as you can see. So what we can really do here is friends, we can come up, small group, hang out here, watch a ball game, wait on ourselves, have our own little situation. Uh, we've got the hot tub right out the door here, a seating area. Um, actually, we can have really nice dance parties in the afternoon. Oh, yeah? We can take the, we can take the uh, jet skis down and okay. that becomes a very big, big nice dance, dance floor. floor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is one of the nice rooms and one of my favorite spots to be. So you, you said early on you had you had three requirements, but I think your fourth that you you've mentioned to me several times is it has to have a hot tub too, though. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, after a long day of doing whatever you're doing, yeah, right. coming back and hitting the hot tub and and uh, enjoying that is really a big plus. Okay. You know, we were doing sport fishing for a while, and after a long day of getting pounded out in the yeah. seas doing that, yeah. it was nice to come back sit in the hot tub and kind of rehab a little bit. Yeah. All right. Well, so we still have one more deck to go. Indeed. Oh. All right. Let's go do that. <laughs> but we're going to be a little windier. Yeah, right? it will be. I can actually see you driving the boat from up here. You could, yes. There's visibility. Because you got all the same repeaters here, right? 100%. Uh, this is this is underway. Uh -huh. There's probably no better place to be on a boat with the wind. If you can get the wind behind you, you can sit up here. You feel zero wind. And this is a great spot to the girls to lay out in the sun lounge and yeah. have have uh, you know snacks and a cocktail or two and yeah, relax. Get a wet bar here too and yeah. hundred percent this is a regular bar right here so this yeah. would be the fourth bar fourth bar be fourth bar exactly all right you don't have to go too far and then above that we have uh, you know radar and communication systems so you're you're fully plugged in I mean with one of the companies that you are a a heavy shareholder in is FMC, which does like offshore communications type stuff? Sure. FMC Global Sat um, is, is a provider of satellite communications, mm -hmm. high speed. We use a new technology that actually was invented by Bill Gates, okay. one of his companies. And it's a little octagon shaped flat dish, about maybe three inches thick. And you can put it much, put it anywhere on the boat. You can mount it very easily, it's weatherproof. Um, and it will receive high-speed internet um, at less than half the cost of what we're normally used to right. which on these expensive. boats, which can be just ridiculous, you know. I, and and the speeds were slow, and they were were ridiculous. And you said it also will do switching, like if you're in the Bahamas, it'll switch to whatever 4G network automatically type thing. Correct. Right. So if you're, you know, obviously using the satellite service is, is more expensive, right? right? So if you're in, in range of land and you can use the cell system, right. it will automatically go to that, to that cell system and use that. And you don't need any additional SIM cards. It'll operate in 180 countries with the SIM card. Yeah, we have contracts with all these 
various uh, uh, cell phone providers around the world. And so we use the same SIM card uh, in 180 different countries. So yeah. no no worries on that. All right, well, that's pretty cool. So I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes there if you're interested in that. And uh, that's pretty cool technology. But what, what does it start price-wise at? The, system or the, the, the monthly subscription fee? Well, we have a, we have a plan uh, where if you sign a three-year contract, uh, it depends how much data you want, so we won't get into those specific numbers. But you can actually get the dish for free on a three-year contract okay. basis, and normally it'd be twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars for the dish itself. Right. Oh, wow. okay. Well, I think we've seen most of the boat. Well, no, there is still more space down there. Yeah, that's a great spot down there. Um, if it's a little windy on the aft deck. Yeah. Then you can go to, you go go to the, the fore deck. deck. Yeah. The there's a great seating area up there okay. as well. Bob, thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure getting to take a look at this amazing boat. So, well, thanks for coming aboard, Bobby. Yeah. And, and you know, you got to go on a cruise one day. Well, you know, I'll take you up on that. For sure, <laughs> we Let's definitely will, or we'll or we'll bump into you somewhere along the road. All there. right. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thanks for coming. Hey, thank you so much, guys. And thank you to our patrons for making this channel possible. You can go to patreoncom doodles if you'd like to help and check out one of these videos, please.